What's up guys, Zach Kaplan here, or artist formerly known as Legomation Studio, here bringing you some new Bionicle reviews. Am I really gonna wear this mask the whole time? No, not gonna wear a mask the entire review. What's up everyone, artist formerly known as Legomation Studio, coming at you with Bionicle Reviews Remastered. Now it's been six to seven years since I've done one of these. Things have changed, I've gone to film school and we're stepping it up a notch. Check out my latest video about why I decided to start reviewing old sets again. Back when I did classic reviews, I didn't really get around to the Metru Matoran, the Toa Metru, the Vaki, the Visorok, a lot of the metronui like $10, $8 sets. So I figured that's exactly what I'll be doing. So with that said, today let's take a look at the Vaki. Following up after the Rakshi, bendable knees were the new standard. The Vaki were robotic order enforcement squads designed to protect and maintain order in Metronui before the Great Cataclysm. They were actually designed by Nuparu to help keep peace in Metronui and were produced in masses by Pomatoran. It's believed that there were around 5,000 Vaki created. They were essentially the police of Metronui. Though Vaki often tried to stop the Toa Metru, they were not evil and obeyed any order they were given by Turagaduma. They were well known and somewhat feared and resented for being coldly efficient and dedicated. Although capable of speaking the Matoran language, their speech was normally inaudible frequencies, which were translated by Duma by special equipment. Each Vaki was also equipped with a built-in Kanoka disc launcher and some flight ability as well. Nurok, the Ta Metru Vaki, Bordok, the Ga Metru Vaki, Zadok, the Po Metru Vaki, Kirok, the Ko Metru Vaki, Vorzok, the Li Metru Vaki, and Rorzok, the Onu Metru Vaki. Originally, the Vaki went for about $7.99 US dollars, but now you can find them for around $10 to $15 dollars used and about $25, $30 dollars new. I was lucky enough to get this entire set with the canisters for around $60. And as you guys know, the canisters are super important to me. When first looking at the canisters, you can tell that the Vaki are each in their different formations. Being called the City of Legends, Metronui was a very intriguing premise, and that's why it makes sense to have this city featured in the background of the Vaki canisters. And on the back, we also have displayed the two functions you can put the Vaki in, standing upright or on all fours, as well as the ability to fold them up and put them inside the canister and use them as sort of storage units, which we saw with the original Toa, the Borok, and the Rakshi as well. And then on the very back, a very hard to see but lightly printed Lego logo. Each canister's lid corresponds to the translucent eye color of each Vaki. On the very top of the canisters too, you can probably tell that in Matoran language is written out the name of each Vaki, as well as the Vaki's pincers for shooting Kanoka discs. And they're easily stackable. Now after looking at the canisters, the selling point is clear. They're actually pretty attractive. In fact, I would say that the uh, translucent tops are definitely a plus. But now that we've taken a look at the outside, let's open them up and see what we got for our money on the inside. In opening and taking a look at what's inside these canisters, let's take a look at Bordok and Kirok. Bordok specifically because this Vaki was very much featured in all of the commercials. It's kind of like the staple in the advertising. So we open it up. Dump out all the contents. Let's see what we got for our money, shall we? To quickly go over the instruction booklet, as you can see here, we have Vaki Bordok with the blue background of Metru Nui. A photo of all the Metrus in Metru Nui, each city, along with their Toa as well. And then as we get to the back, we have their two combination models, as well as the Vaki themselves. We have uh, an advertisement for all the Titans of that year, and an advertisement for the Toa Metru and the Matoran of Metronui as well. And then on the back, we have the mysterious Bionicle 2 Legends of Metronui coming soon. Okay, so just taking a look at these pieces, you know, we have some of the uh, Toa Metru limbs. We have in gray, the Toa Mata feet. And then for the time, these new Vaki limbs in dark blue. We have the Vaki headpiece along with its corresponding eyes, these being these translucent color, and you pretty much have these pinchers, which is like their mouthpiece, you know? But the, as you'll see soon, the function of twisting them is due to this Matoran body. This piece is new though. This was another part of the Vaki torso, which is brand new. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight new pieces within this Vaki set. It looks like in this one, we have a Kanoka card club points. This hasn't even been opened, oh my gosh. 
Wow, I mean, it won't work anymore, but I remember you could enter these online and unlock exclusive content like movies. So again, with Kirok as well as most of the others, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You could technically count the disc and this torso piece, but I'd say around eight, nine brand new pieces included in the Vaki sets. Now, let's get to building these guys. So here we have the Vaki fully formed, fully built. It took about 18, 19 minutes or so, super easy builds. You know, there isn't too much crazy going on here. They are very similar. Obviously, I'd say like the color coordination is very interesting for me in the black one and the blue one. Because of the fact that they have a very similar torso, actually literally almost carbon copy to the uh, Matoran of 2003, it doesn't uh, change things up too drastically. Now, there's some new pieces in here, don't get me wrong. And with the head piece being this kind of new translucent, giant translucent eyepiece um, makes them stand out for sure. Their weapons are different and all that. When you compare them up to like the Toa Metru, they're definitely a more of a disappointment. You know, the Toa Metru, they look different. They have like different postures, sizes. They're, they're the Toa characters. Whereas, you know, the Valky are meant to be these mindless drones. They're literally clone copies of each other besides the color and a couple of weapon changes. Not a whole lot making them stand out, but for some people that's a good thing. When I look at these standing all side by side, they look quite quite cool and in the fact that you have two types of formations that you can put them in they can stand up straight or get on all fours I'd say like it definitely looks nice to have them all together the fact that they're so cheap too you know why not buy them the gear function very similar to the Rakshi and the Matoran of 2003 they go back and forth just like this and uh, move their arms just like so new rock new rock were the type of Vaki designed to protect and maintain order in Ta Metru they were the fastest of the Vaki and preferred to lie and wait for targets, then swiftly surround them in ambushes. They had been known to start fights with each other that other Vaki had to break up. Their staffs of command could fill the mind of a Matorn with a single overriding directive, which they would follow until the stun wore off hours later. Bordok Bordok was the type of Vaki designed to maintain order in Ga Metru. Bordok loved to delay the chase, loving the thrill of the pursuit. Bordok were the only model of the Vaki designed to function underwater as well, although even they tended to avoid it. Their staffs of loyalty could temporarily turn Matoran into zealous supporters of order that would even help the Vaki apprehend their own friends. Zadok. Zadok were the model of Vaki assigned to protect and maintain order in Po Metru. Their abilities? Well, they're the strongest of the Vaki. Zadok were fearless to the point of recklessness and always eager to jump into a fight. Their staffs of suggestion left a target willing to follow orders from almost anyone. Kirok. Kirok were the Vaki assigned to protect and maintain order in Ko Metru. Kirok didn't bother to chase lawbreakers, for they had an uncanny ability to deduce a target's destination and then get there first. Their staffs of confusion could scramble Matoran's sense of time and place. Vorzak were the Vaki assigned to protecting and maintaining order in Lee Metru. Vorzak, much like Zadok, didn't have the patience for long chases. Unlike the Zadok, the Vorzak were lazy, just wishing the chase to be over with. They would rather just smash everything in their path until they had found whoever they were searching for. Their staffs of erasing could temporarily eliminate a target's higher mental functions, leaving only their motor functions intact. Rorzak. Rorzak were designed to protect Onu Metru. The Rorzak were utterly relentless. They would follow their targets anywhere, no matter what the risk, continuing even if it meant their own destruction. Their staffs of presence made it possible for the Vaki to see and hear whatever the affected being did, without the subject being aware. Personally, I really like Rorzak and Bordak. I like the mix of this kind of orange and blue here with the yellow 
and black. I think yellow and black are very complimentary. I think Kirok with the blue and the white is just a cool look, no doubt, and a really cool color combination. So now for the pros and cons. I'd say that the headpieces are really great here. Also, different weapon molds. The disc launcher for their mouths and the two standing forms. One on their two legs and one on all fours. The gear function. So that's five pros, but how about the cons? The cons, well, they do have a lot of gray within them. It's very similar to Rakshi, actually, and I understand that they're mindless drones, basically robots, so maybe the fact that they had a little less color than the Toa Metru was kind of by design. One problem I have with the figures is that their heads, I mean, while they definitely turn right and left a little bit downwards, you can't really turn them that much backwards. You put them on all fours, however, then you have a little more articulation going back, but otherwise, I think the size of their jaws tend to get in the way of mobility with their heads, but that's just a minor nitpick. One of the biggest things for me is that they have no elbows, no bendable elbows. This is a thing that we would see get fixed in many figures to come, but at the current time, you know, you would have thought that they could have put another way to have an elbow joint fixed, but instead they decided to use the uh, Toa Mata arms, which is totally fine still. The fact that we got these Mata arms in all these different colors was a plus for mocking. My number one, you could argue number one and two, tied con for these figures. One, of course, is the fact that they are very, very similar and a little bit bland as far as their uh, differentiating looks go. But my number one problem is just the fact that they don't have any armor on their legs. You would think with the Toa Metro having those armor plates, could have been something they could have added to these just to add a little more pizzazz, a little more of a colorful standout look to them. I know that they couldn't literally use some of the Toa Metro armor, but to have seen something on the front of these kneecaps would have... I think added a little more characteristics to them, maybe something on the back for armor, but again, you know, they didn't want anything to block this mobility, so I can understand it from a certain point of view, why they uh, decided to leave them a little less armored up. Now let's go ahead and check out the Vaki's combination models. So here are the combination models, the Alimetru, Gametru, and Kometru Vaki combined to make this like spider-like creature, it's I think not bad at all. The spine out of the Toa feet. It has like some symmetry to it with the colors and everything. The new Rock Zadok and Rorzak, the brown, black, and red Vaki, make this kind of a chunky guy, chonk lord over here. But what are you gonna do? Fun fact, when I was making these combination models, I had a spare set of six that I had ordered online. While I was building it, I realized that they had misplaced one of the hand pieces with a more newer, probably 2007 era, and, and as I unsnapped it, it broke. The moment I get back to reviewing and taking apart Bionicles, I get handed one of these pieces that breaks. But yeah, overall I like the combination models. I have nothing wrong with them. I actually think that they're pretty good. So if you have a spare set of six, you can build these combo models as well. And, but I like the spider. I actually think it has kind of a really cool look to it, kind of Rahi Beast mode. Now, I don't know, this is something you guys can post in the comment section below, but are these models based off of any real characters in the comics? Were these canonized at all? If so, uh, let me know. Is this something the Vaki could do, combining together? So what are my thoughts overall? Well, there's a reason we started with these figures out of all the ones that I've rebought is because they're probably on the lower tier, you know? I wouldn't rate them too high. I'd say that if you're a collector, no doubt you want to get these. They're very cheap right now. You could probably buy all six for about 50 bucks used. That's less than $10 a pop, and they originally went for $7.99. If you want them brand new, just like any Bionicle now, they're gonna be pricey. I'd say whereas like a Toa Metru in the canister, fresh brand new, is probably 50, 60 bucks, these guys are gonna run you about 30 a pop, 25 or so. Depends where you go, Bricklink, eBay, but I was able to find these guys on Bricklink, all six for about 50 bucks with the canisters included. They were European, so there were a couple pieces here and there I had to replace or were missing or something. But for the most part, I will say that these are just, you know, obviously a must-have for collectors. I think any Bionicle set nowadays, especially with the rarity we have going on, um, are must-have for collectors. If you're not the biggest fan, hey, maybe don't rush out and get them. But if you also don't want the canisters and you don't want the instructions and all that, kind of like how I do with my collecting, you can find all six of these for less than $10 a pop, even probably for 40 something if you look online far enough. And so, in, when you look at it like that, I would say they're definitely a worthwhile purchase. I do think that standing together, they are very fun and have this formidable look. But honestly, the Vaki have always been on the lower tier of people's like six set collections. And as a team of six, you know, 
they're definitely not the most, one, nostalgic, because in the film, Bionicle Legends of Metro Nui, they don't really have a whole lot of personality, they don't do much, you know, the Rakshi were each, you know, very different and seemed different, but as I read with these bios, apparently there's a lot more to the Vaki that we didn't even know. So yeah, in conclusion, if I were to rate these guys out of 10, I'd probably give them a 6, 6.5, maybe a 6.8 if I was being generous, but that's just because I love Bionicle in general, and I still think that these are cool creatures, cool characters to have, and the fact that they run you not a lot of money now, in fact, just used, they pretty much go for the same price they originally sold as, it's not a bad deal, you know, definitely a bang for your buck. They aren't no Toa Metru, and they definitely aren't Vizorak, as you'll see in a review coming soon. But anyways, guys, I'm back. LEGO Nation Studios, Zach Kaplan, back reviewing Bionicle. We decided to start with the Vaki. I think up next we're going to do the uh, Matoro of Metro Nui. We're going to move on to the Rahaga, the Vizorok, the Toahaga. So until then, I'll see you guys next time on the next Bionicle review. Make sure if you guys haven't yet, follow me on Instagram at the Zach Cap and make sure to subscribe. Click that notification bell button because nowadays YouTube is getting harder than ever to let my subscribers know. In fact, I know some people have been getting unsubscribed due to, I don't know, some weird thing in the YouTube algorithm. So just make sure you're subscribed. Hit the like button, post in the comments, what do you think of the Vaki? Would you call them underrated? Or would you say, yeah, they generally, you would agree that they are kind of the bottom tier of six set collection models. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate all the love and support that I've been getting. And I'll see you guys on the next one with the Matoran of Metronui. Until then, signing off.